Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I am Peter, that is Connor and we are going to talk about The Tick, Season 1, Episode 7, it's called Tale from the Crypt. So, full spoilers for the episode, we're happy to have The Tick back, The Tick has been gone for a few months, they split the season into two, so this is why we're randomly, well seemingly randomly, just jumping into Episode 7 right now, yes. where it's been months since episode 6 uh, but hey so so that's what we're going to talk about and we left off, the mid-season cliffhanger was that Arthur had been kidnapped by the terror and no one knew where he was so that's kind of where we, we open up uh, and the title of the episode is what it is, because obviously it's a reference to Tales from the Crypt, but it's, it's because the terror's secret base is under a cemetery and they're all in crypts and it's, it's, yeah, it's, 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 over, it's, it's ridiculous over the top it? Uh on top of that, he he is he's kidnapped someone, a, a drum teacher, to basically reenact scenes from Whiplash, and then when he doesn't get good enough, he says, "I'm going to kill you after two more lessons if I'm not as good as this this recording here." Oh, it cracked me up because you know he's playing the piece. And I'm like, oh, okay, let's, let's see what he's doing here. Yeah. And then the symbol comes flying. Yeah, and I was like, oh, 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 they're actually doing it. And then he comes in and says, "You're dragging." I was like, oh, oh okay, no shame, no shame, Amazon. Well, come on, all the Alexa talk, no, you, yeah, you, yeah. you talk about shame. But here's, here's the thing, though. Like, that was funny. If they're in the assembly, he's like, oh, you're dragging your drama. Okay, whiplash joke. But then he's like, no, you're going too easy on me. If I'm not good enough in two more lessons, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, this is weird. He's actually threatening someone to be J.K. Simmons in whiplash because <laughs> he thinks that'll make him a better drummer. Oh, I love it. I, I, I genuinely forgot how funny this show is. It is genuinely funny. My favourite part of the whole thing is the existential crisis that Danger Boat is having because he's got a crush on Arthur and he identifies as a male but he's not sure if that makes him homosexual given that he's a boat and Arthur's a man. Or a human being, more specifically. Yes. Uh, does that count as homosexual? Is, is he really a male when he's a boat? I think it's interesting. You know, I, I don't know if I mentioned it before but you know, typically all boats are, are women, aren't they? They're all, they're all female. Uh, that sounds right. Yeah, you're right, yeah. It's always a she for boats and ships. So, so. it's always she. Is there any vehicle that's a man? I, I, don't know. I, I think that's just across the board. Like you know, if someone refers to the car with a pronoun, it tends to be she. Uh, I feel like you could do it either way with a car, whereas you know, boats and ships. I've never are like, heard. No, I've, no, never, they are. I've never heard a car referred to as a male. Uh, and I think, I think, I think it comes from the fact that it ty- it's typically men who are obsessed with them, so they like to think of the yeah, no, no, the vehicle as the opposite sex. Uh, so I think that's where it comes from originally, but uh, is it, I don't know. I was cracking up because you weren't sure what he was talking about at first. He's like, you know, I identify as a male, and I'm like, and it, you're with the tick because the tick's sitting there going, huh? Well, what, 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 are you what, what are you talking about? about now? You know, he's doing his voice. And he, he's and, and then he's like, but I mean, is it homosexual? Because that means the same. And blah blah blah. And, and he just mentions Arthur's. Like, oh, Arthur's who's got a crush on? Because at first I thought he had a crush on a boat. Yeah, me too. And he was, he was trying to figure out if the, the, the other boat identified as a gender, therefore, is he homosexual or straight based on what gender the boat is? <laughs> and he's not sure. And I, I was having... The whole thing was great. <laughs> yeah. Danger also, boat. Danger Boat wanting to go by Steve as his code name. That cracked me up. Yeah, no real names, so he wants, he wants a code name. <laughs> I like that he's got the cool superhero boat name normally, and the code name is... It's just is, a regular yeah. dude name. Yeah. Whereas normally it's no, don't call me Superman over comms. Call me, or call, don't call me Clark. Call me Superman. That's usually yeah. the the line yeah, of yeah. thinking, but not here. Not with Danger Boat. Oh, I love Danger Boat because they're looking for Danger Boat. I, everyone knows who Danger Boat is. They're going to go looking <laughs> for Danger Boat. Yeah, I've got a funny oh. feeling. Over Overkill has not got uh, enlisted, and you know, <laughs> as Danger Boat in the probably probably not. I wouldn't have thought he's, so. He's, anyway. he's in the directory. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, obviously, those were some highlights. Uh, I, I also enjoy Overkill. So, so basically, the tech's looking for Arthur. There's a funny little bit a montage at the start where the tech's just standing at various parts of the city. Sometimes in like in the, the little store that's by Arthur's apartment. Sometimes on a roof, just yelling Arthur, Arthur, as if you know, do, do, doing the bit, do, doing this the sad movie bit where he's yelling the yeah. name. Uh, of course, it builds up to the joke where the shopkeeper's like, "Hey, have you tried his apartment?" It's like the apartment. The one place I didn't think to look for him. Yeah. So good. And that's where he runs into Dot and Overkill. Uh, Dot, of course, making fun of Overkill for doing the whole Spider-Man in the corner <laughs> thing, trying not to be noticed. He's like, don't look at me. Yeah. I love uh, that he's there for so long and then his, like, his radio goes off. And he, yeah. You can just see him go, damn it. 
And they, they, they all, I mean, she she wants to go, he doesn't want you to come, and then he kind of gives in really quickly. <laughs> he just like, He's like, oh. oh yeah, I just remembered the three-man plan, come on. Yeah. Uh, but they're going around the cemetery looking for, you know, where the where, where this base might be. And actually, I liked how, because they're holding flowers, and I'm like, why are they holding flowers? And then later on, you see they've actually got the little sensors. They've got the little, like, Yeah, uh, it, no, because it, it did me so I thought it was just part of the cover at first. Because part of me thought, well, is anyone really going to, like, come up and ask you why you've got, like, a little... Because it looks like a phone. It's just like a... It looks like a smartphone. Like, is anyone really going to come up and ask you why you're holding a smartphone? I think it's just disrespectful, isn't it? To be taking photos of the ground at a cemetery? Well, not not to be taking photos, but just to be walking around the cemetery on your phone. I would never have thought twice about it, but, I mean, maybe that just... <laughs> no, I, I don't think I would have, really. But I guess it's disrespectful. It's if you're walking over the grave, sure, but if you're walking in the... The, the, you know the paths and whatnot. Yeah, uh, yeah, I know. I don't. I'm, 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 I'm spitballing here. Give, give me peace. I don't know. I mean, do you, do you go to the 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 the, the, the grave site of uh, Alexander Graham Bell and just be like, hey, phones have gotten better, you dickhead, and just you know, fought, you know, taunt I don't them. Know. I always feel like they're really quiet play when it, cause I, whenever I used to walk through because there was one next to my house where I used mm. to live, so I'd cut, cut through. It was like a shortcut. You'd cut so through I'd... the land of the dead, you disrespectful bastard. Well, it was like. I can go through the cemetery or I can go all the way around. I know which one I'm doing. And yeah, but it, it, it's always so quiet. Everyone's whispering when it just, you know, it's just, you're outside. You know, so it shouldn't be, but everyone's really quiet in there. So I guess oh, yeah. it's a, I a mean, I get not thing. yelling to someone on the phone, but I don't, you know, if you're just looking at a text or something like that. No, no, no but there's doing like, everyone's just whispering. No, I, I never saw anyone on their phones. Uh, yeah, I guess that's fair. But it, regardless, they've got some flowers and they've got the little sensor uh, yeah. hidden in the flowers. And when they find the place, the, the tech is shot out of the of a, a cannon. Cargo cannon. Cargo cannon on Danger Boat. He fires them which out is, into the sky. Which, which doubles as a shower. Which Yeah, because it's a shower at first and it all changes. Yeah. You know, 60s spy movie kind of style. It all changes into a <laughs> cannon. <laughs> yeah, it all folds away. He fires up and he flies through the air. It's, somehow the aim in this thing is really good because it, it aims them directly at the point. Well, I know, to be fair, Danger Boat locked onto the coordinates. Oh, no, no. I'm not disputing that they know where the coordinates are or that Danger Boat knows where the coordinates are. I'm disputing how accurate this cannon is when visually it looks like it just fires them straight up into the air. Ah, it's all physics. Angles, trajectory. There is no angles. It was straight up. It was, it was a vertical line. <laughs> Stop picking it apart. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It's not like it goes. Okay, we're going for the so we'll, we'll tilt. You know, did 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 did. You know, it doesn't do that. None of this. It just fires them straight up. So you say. <laughs> so I saw. So yeah. they they go hunting for him. Um, meanwhile, Arthur is trapped in. He's, he's in a cell. He starts talking to the scientist who's in the next cell. Who at first, Actually, for a little bit, I thought he was imagining that he was talking to the scientist. Like, maybe... Because it was the scientist who built the suit. It was, you know, the, the one who was behind, like, the... the uh, they, they wanted to kill Superion, you know, so... so Project they, Achilles. Yeah. And he talks to him for a bit, and we see that he's in a lab next to him. I, th- I thought, whatever. But it's when Miss Lint talks to him, and she's like, who are you talking to? I thought, oh, is he not really there? Is it all in his head? Is, is it because he's wearing the suit and like, his, his consciousness, his AI, he's like, in the suit or something? And he's, he's you know. Okay. He wasn't actually wearing the suit in the scene, but I was thinking because he you know bonded with the suit that maybe it's yeah, yeah. done something to him. Uh, instead, we get the weird twist that he is next door, but he's been shrunk in size. He's, he's about three foot tall or something like that. And we get some, you know, Lord of the Rings-esque, I mean, it's, it's a bigger difference, actually, but, you know, that yes. kind of style where, he's, he's, you know, Arthur's really tall and the, the lab and him, he's really small, uh, and he helps he him escape. Because Miss Lent helps him get out, she gives him a key, so she, she's got a bit of a, a com- moral compass. Well, it seems that way at first, until, of course, she goes to the terror, and she's like, yes, he's out as planned. He's got the suit he's on. Got the suit. Yeah, yeah. Because like, he starts comparing his plan to music. He's like, oh, there's a tempo. You want to, or, they're all playing part of my, my, my piece, so I'm just in the tempo, and he's he's... he's He's very poorly kind of shown on the drums what he means. <laughs> it's, it's all very good. But that's intentional because he's, he's shit at the drums. That's kind of the point. Mm. Uh, but yeah, so he, he goes back. He makes the hero's choice, which is what they didn't expect him to do, is to turn back and go and save the scientist and not just get himself out. Uh, so he makes it like Arthur a little bit more so it works in that sense of the hero's journey. And I like that the terror even kind of acknowledges that. He's like, oh, and all that time, that day, you know, with Ice Cream Kid, I made, I made a new hero, which is what I need right now for whatever his plan is. Yes, exactly. So... so it all worked out in the end, didn't it? 
apparently did. So he flies out, we get a weird joke where the, the little scientist punches him in the dick <laughs> and runs off. Yeah. Which, no, I was expecting a punchline because they were standing there and the scientist was looking up at this guy and he was like, oh, it's been so many years since I've seen the sky. And I was like, well, I promise you there'll be more days like this. And I thought the scientist was going to get shot in the head or something, like right there and then. I thought that was what the joke was going to be. And then he turned and just punched them in the balls and ran off. And I'm like, okay, I wasn't expecting that. It was pretty funny. Yeah. Oh. That, that, that's something I, I can always give this show credit for. I'm never expecting what it does next. That's true. That's true. It goes off in, in interesting location uh, or directions rather that you just you, you're not really seeing coming. Yeah, it just it just does its own thing. It's like no, this, this, we're going this way now. To to tie it into one of the main uh, themes of the episode, it's off tempo. Very nice. Let's do a bit of off tempo nice. work. Because uh, because you, you think you think you're just getting to the rhythm of it. You think you're just you're just you're just getting a grasp of what the show's doing. You think you know what's coming next, and then it's like, nah, tempo change. Sorry, yeah, off we go. Yeah, no, I'm with you. Uh, the visual effects of Mean Small was mostly pretty good, except when he was carrying him, and it looked a bit weird. Yeah, it looked like he was much smaller when he was being carried as well. Yeah, um, it's you know, it's, 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 the face was sort of like put on whatever he was actually carrying. Uh, a little bit squashed looking, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. So I, I think he may, he may have been holding a kid or something instead, like a stunt kid. <laughs> Here, just a bundle of rags. Well, okay, I don't know if it was all CG. I, I got, I was thinking it was maybe like there was actually someone, like a body. So the arms and legs were maybe still. Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah. It was just a face that was because the face was the weird part for me. It was looking like it, it was, was. Yeah. Like it was. We didn't put see on. much of the body when he was carrying it, so it could have just been like a doll. So, so I'm thinking like if someone brought in a three year old, and said, "Here, you're going to be carried in this scene." Yeah, I'll do the trick. Maybe not. Maybe if I go back and watch it and I'll look at the arms and legs, maybe they'll, they were CG as well, in which case, yeah, it was either been carrying a doll or something. I think, I think to be fair, though, you're, you're more distracted by the face because that's where your eyes are drawn to anyway. No, that's so. fair. That's fair. Uh, see, I think I'm thinking of the older tricks that would pull this off a little bit better, and maybe it was just all CG. So he was holding just like a green sack, and yeah. they just CG'd yeah, over a green sack. Yeah, that's very Kind possible. of unnecessary if that is the case. But. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course... <laughs> When Overkill and Tech walk into the lab and walk into the lair and uh, Terra's set up with bombs and Overkill's like, C4. And then the Tech's like, I see more than four. <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, and then that's the cliff fires. It blows up and Dot's like, hey, Arthur, they were inside. And like, okay, so yeah, that's a cliff yeah. fire. She, she's watching the flank. She, yeah, she's, she's watching the flank. She's very she's learned that phrase and then she's very proud to use it in front of Arthur to look cool. <laughs> Just immediately, it's like, I know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm watching the flank. Uh, even some of her stuff with uh, Overkill was pretty funny. The uh, where she's trying to make small talk, and he's like, "Oh, you're just trying to make small talk so to you know ignore the f- just to, just to distract yourself from the fact that your brother is in mortal danger, if not already dead." It's like, uh, "He's probably not dead." <laughs> <laughs> Are you? And he's like, "I'm not very good at banter." <laughs> and she's like, "No, that was that was great. Thanks." Yeah. 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 No, so uh, the jokes are you know thick and fast uh, as it, as it has been. But it, what There's I like so many in a twenty five minute episode. There really is, um, and what I like as well, and I remember seeing this a lot last time. I feel like at every possible turn, it's subverting a trope of some kind. Yeah. Uh, whether it's a superhero trope, whether it's a you know a spy trope, well whatever. No, um, no, it's true. It's hell, at one point, at one point, um, when he's arguing with Dot, Overkill just start basically saying Chuck Norris facts about himself. Where she's like, that doesn't even like follow my line of question. He's like, oh, I don't follow lines. Lines follow me. And, like and he's, he, he, he says that, and she, she's just like confused. And like he's literally just saying Chuck Norris facts at this point about himself to yeah. stop. She calls him out. It's like these are just poetry non sequiturs now. Yeah, um, it, you know, it was funny. It was funny. So, so it's played with all these tropes. Uh, I think we talked a lot of, in the first half about like, the, the character work, and I think we'll get more into that as we, as we get more episodes again and we get more to the. Yeah, this was very much the the flashy return. Yeah, like this this was mostly oh here's your big set piece of okay look we can do this. Yeah, and to 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 its credit, in twenty five minutes, I feel like every major character got at least one good beat to play. Yeah, you know, Dot had a few, yeah. Arthur had a few. He got he's like hero's choice, of course. Uh, the Terror got a few. Lint got one with Arthur. Uh, Overkill, Danger Boat, the Tick, of course. All of them got at least one good moment, if not a couple. In twenty five minutes, that really is impressive because it just fl- like flies in. It, oh, it does! Like, see, see, see when it like she's like, oh, the, the overkill and the, the tick. They were down there, Arthur. Cut to black. I was like, oh, we're done. 
Oh, that was yeah. that was quite fire. If if anything, that's my one complaint is that when the the credits hit, I'm like, oh, I didn't realize we were we were done. Yeah, do you know what? I, I know this is going to sound weird, but for a season two, this could really benefit with being like a forty minute show. Uh, I kind of agree. Uh, I know that they're doing I think it's less episodes because this is twelve this season. So we, yes. have, we have two batches of six. Technically, a batch of one, then a batch of five, and then a batch of six. But regardless. Um, where season two, I think it's going to be ten episodes. So I'm wondering if that's what they're thinking about. I wonder if they're going to maybe bump, even if it's just bumping them all up to about thirty minutes instead of twenty-five. Yeah, 30, thirty to thirty-five instead of the twenty-five yeah. to thirty that they are at the minute would make a big difference. Yeah, I think just just, just, just uh, let the plot breathe a little bit more. Yeah, uh, we didn't get any of his, his stepdad. We got the joke, of course, like oh, he's not my dad because that was a big joke last season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but as soon as you said season. that last year, but not last season. Oh, you're right. Yeah, last year. Uh, but then, I, then as soon as he said that, I was like, "Oh yeah, his dad always asked the questions about the feet." <laughs> yeah, I need more of him. I need, I need yeah. the feet. Step and, and he says to us later, "So you, you are my mom and new vacuum cleaner." <laughs> and I, re- I recall that scene. Yes, where we yeah, exploded. Yeah. Yes, I, I do yeah. recall that very um, vividly. Uh, Joe, you know I'll give credit as well. I think they knew this was after a break because I feel like they made a point, a, a really smart point, of having someone bring up a lot of the key details. Of things mm. that happened last season, uh, they mentioned the time cover with the ice cream last you year. Said whatever, last season again. whatever. Know. You know just, what I mean? I'm just shaking my head. You know what I mean? Right. You know, uh, you remember the the time cover? You know, ice cream kid, dad, death. Yeah. They brought all that up. Uh, Arthur, when he's talking to the science, like, oh, you did this. You you product Achilles. You wanted to kill Superior. Okay, he's reminded of a Superior. And you know, you you brought up the suit. The fact that it's bonded with him. All these key details, just in case you forgot. Instead of giving us a previously on. They made sure that everything, all the key points yeah. were hit, so that by the end even of the episode, just, you, you didn't feel like you were lost at all. If you'd no, forgotten No, even just the idea of, you know, oh, he doesn't know everything that the suit can do. Yeah, like, quite uh, when, right. When yeah. the science is like, hey, lights. Yeah, so, I've on. got lights. Yeah, and, he, and he's got light beams in his head. Yeah, so yeah. as much as, I don't know how much they planned to split it in half, but it feels like they, they very, in, very intelligently wrote this episode to make sure, for if you had, you know, watched all the first six episodes four months ago, that this was going to quite neatly just yeah. bring you back up to speed. Like, here's all these things. I am really intrigued to know when they made that decision because obviously we was because it was quite late that we learned they were splitting it. You know, for for when they were filming the show, and like when we were getting into the cycle. It was maybe, it yeah, was it was relative... maybe, maybe a couple of months before the first half went up. Right, uh, like but you know, you, we were going okay. So it, maybe it's effects work that you know the other half's not going to be finished. So we'll you know they, they want more time on that. But then we got to the end of that first half and, you know, they had the, the literal cliffhanger moment. And <laughs> yeah. it was like, that feels like it was intentionally for a break. And then this here, again, it feels like, no, 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 they knew there was a break here. So I'm wondering how early in the production schedule they actually knew this compared to how early we found out. Or even if they knew there was a possibility, so they planned for, for it. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. maybe Amazon were like, hey, look, nothing set in stone yet, but we might do a break here. We'll see how things are going and update you later. Yeah, yeah. So they, they, they maybe planned around that. Uh, maybe it's just maybe it, it wouldn't surprise me actually if going for because I know Netflix are starting to split a couple of seasons as well. I wonder if it's going forward like that's something that's over all these shows. Maybe get into like their seasons where look, there's a chance we might make the choice to split us in half. So keep that in mind when you're structuring your season, and maybe it'll force like all shows to kind of plan for that possibility, but not necessarily cr- concrete. It'll, it'll be interesting because it'll her- herald a. An, an arrival of the mid-season finale to the to the streaming service. Which, honestly, I mean, as much as I like binging stuff, for us covering stuff on the channel, splitting it into like smaller chunks of episodes is actually better for us. <laughs> Especially if, if they're going to give it... I mean, at the minute, we kind of have stuff every two to three weeks, but yeah. you know, there's more and more stuff that it's, it's going to get a point where it's going to be every week. So, hey, smaller chunks every week is probably better for us. Yeah, because it, it, it almost, it's almost like halfway towards having things weekly by splitting it in two, like... Mm. And also, maybe in the future they'll split like a twelve episode thing into three, four chunks of four. But they'll be, you know, they'll be every couple of months. And yeah, it's like yeah. at this see. point, like just put it weekly. Just, just, just follow TV and do it weekly. Yeah, I know. Uh, I, I, I know. know. But they, they, I think they're too ingrained in their brand to not do it weekly. They have yeah, to give it at least a chunk. That, that's fair. I, I think it's kind of weird though, from the perspective of people expect to be able to binge it. I think it's almost more frustrating to get half. If they didn't know about it beforehand, to get halfway through and go, oh shit, only half of it's here. And then I need to yeah. wait for the second half. But no, it, de- it definitely is worse in that scenario. It's murky, but I think for us, for covering stuff on the channel, it's actually better to have smaller chunks of some of these things. It is. Because I know um, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt's getting split in half uh, next season on Netflix, which, I mean, we don't cover that. 
uh, but they've also already done it to Voltron, and I know Voltron suffered because it, anyone who watched that told me that because because I, I made a point of asking, did it feel like they'd planned for, it or was it just a split in half thing? And it, apparently, from everyone I've heard from, it was just split in half. There was no. No, I imagine the next time because obviously they know they're split going forward. It won't be such a problem, but that one feels like they just decided to split it. Yeah, because well, I think after that, because well, they, they could, I think with Voltron's sake, they actually called it different seasons. They said, "Oh, the second half is now season four. I think it was like it was oh, like three, they? four. So I think going forward, like five is just a, sh- a half the length, and then they're just pro- producing them that way now, which is really right, okay. fine, presumably. Yeah, but uh, just that one awkward season where this display, which will be fine now because you can just binge it all. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, time, uh, as it came out, it was a problem. Yeah. But hey uh, so obviously we'll be back uh, with more tech. We'll be doing the rest of the season, of course. Uh, don't expect one airtime on Saturday, but from late Sunday onwards, we should be knocking them out fairly quickly, I think. So yeah. uh, look forward to more tech. Look forward to watching more. Uh, so let us know what you think of this, the show and the comments, like, subscribe, all the rest of it. Get us on the Twitters at mail underscore fuzz for channel updates. If you want to support the channel, head over to patreon.com slash mailfuzztv. Uh, you can get a link to that in the description. Uh, but otherwise, that is us. So thank you all once again for watching. Keep watching TV. Have you got any vanilla?